All right. Hello, 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 everyone. You want to come a little bit closer? No, thank you. You want to stay where you are? Oh, Jack's being shy today. There's Jack. He'll be joining us today for our painting party. Okay. Well, I don't know, barely, but all right. So, hey, everyone. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a little bit, a few more um, minutes just before we get started, just to make sure everyone gets on here that wants to um, follow along live. Um, I'm Lisa, this is Lisa's Painting Parties, and we're gonna be painting this lovely spring flower pink balloon painting today. Um, this was voted on by you guys um, this week. So we had three different painting options and this was the one um, that one. Um, the other painting that was very popular was the gray painting that had a tree and a swing in it. So what I think I might actually do is I might add another live painting to do that one, um, maybe on Monday or Tuesday. So just uh, keep up on the live chat there and then we'll be able to, um, I'll, I'll give you an update if uh, or what time we're going to be doing that um, since that was very close um, second to this one. Okay, great. Um, so what we're going to do is, okay, so hi, Hermie. Um, yeah, I have to, someone just messaged me saying that they don't know I'm live yet. So I'm just gonna let them know. I can't find it. Okay, maybe I'll just. One second, everyone. Sorry, Jack? No, thanks. I wasn't there. Hi, Chanel. All right. Um, Herbie, can you also tag in um, Yannette as well? I can't, for some reason, seem to tag her in. And she's having trouble finding us. Oh, there she is. I'm there. Okay, good. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. Just want to make sure that you guys are all in there. Awesome. Okay, great. So let us start. Okay, perfect. So we're going to get started. So um, as always, we have our uh, paints. So red, blue, yellow, black, and white. Um, we have them ready to go on the my messy, messy canvas <laughs> uh, palette right here. Jack has his ready to go too. And what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with obviously the thing that's furthest back. So we're gonna get the sky going on here. The sky is a lovely light pink and it blends into um, a yellow and a white kind of show and there's a little bit of hints of green in it too. So it really is really light and pretty. So the way we're gonna do this is um, we're gonna be mixing um, a little bit of red into our white um, and we're gonna be using water to get that blend. I'm actually going to be doing this painting um, on a portrait, oh, sorry, on a landscape style, um, partially so you can still see the painting in the background as we're going, um, and also just for fun. So, um, all right, there we go. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to wet my big brush a bit with a little bit of water just to get it a little bit wet, get a little bit of red, and mix it into my white a bit. I prepped for today. I watched a few Bob Ross painting shows and that uh, inspired me <laughs> quite a bit. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, for you to do this. Awesome. So we're going to start and we're going to just bring that on the page like that. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to get some water just to bring that out a little bit more and bring some white paint into that too. Ooh. Moving that wasn't such a good idea. There we go. So now I'm dipping my brush back into the white paint and I'm bringing it over kind of where it's a bit wetter and I'm just making it a little lighter because right now it's still pretty, it's a little darker than I want it to be. Okay, and I'm just getting a little bit more water on my brush and I'm just Sweeping back and forth, you can kind of go in any particular direction. It doesn't have to be um, just horizontal. I just put like some really dark red here just because I want it to be a little bit darker on the um, corners. But just play with it and until it feels and it looks the way you want it to look. 
So I wouldn't go super uniform, and there's not like a heck of a lot of, um, um, it's not like super thick paint. I'm using a lot of water to like wash it out and to blend it. So I just put like, that's not working very well today. All right. Again. How's it going, Jack? Looking as good. It's looking good so far. Good. I'm gonna get a little bit more paint, I think, on your um, on your brush, and you want to put a little bit more water as well because it's not blending too much yet. Okay. okay. All right. So it's kind of the way I want it to be. Awesome. And I'm just getting the sides of my painting. If you're doing canvas as well, um, you want to paint the sides. Like if you have a thicker canvas, paint the sides a bit. And we've had some great um, uh, other other options as well of what types of canvases people are using. So um, one of um, one of our uh, family, uh, she's actually using she's painting on rocks, which is really cool. Um, even like planters. So anything really, you can kind of achieve this. So I just dipped my brush in yellow and I'm bringing it into the middle and I'm bringing it upwards and I'm going to add more white on top of that yellow to make it lighter to get that lighter look at least i know i'm going to use purple and i'm going to keep you got some purple already jack yeah i didn't mean to do i didn't mean to use purple that's all right i was just trying to get more pink but accidentally the blue so but accidentally a lot of blue swooped in with the red and white that made purple that's okay. it's more like a lavender That'll look really nice, I think. It's more like Okay, so I've just kind of kept going with, um, when I put a, a pure darker color on, um, what I do then is I put more white almost right on top of it, and I put a bit more um, water on my paintbrush, and then um, that's how I'm able to blend it together, and I'm just bringing up that color. Um, to get kind of like, there's a bit of a sweepiness in the sky, almost like clouds that have kind of like dissipated. The way you're going to do that is if you have white on your brush, you want to just kind of leave like elements and you don't want the sweeps to go all in the same way or else it looks too uniform. So you want to kind of like, I don't know, maybe do like X's or just kind of bring that out a little bit and you're, it's going to look a little bit more like. My pink is more pinkish now. Oh, it is. It looks nice. Okay. So this is just to give the sweeping background. We're not doing... Um, any of the foreground clouds yet. We're going to do that after this dries. That was unexpected from my mother. All right. Okay. So this one has, I'll just show you how that looks so far. There you go. Hi, Linda. If anyone else is popping in, just please say hi in the comments so we can uh, know that you've joined us. It's always fun. So our light source is kind of coming from the bottom here and it's definitely lighter. So I'm just going to put in some white and I'm just dragging that upwards a bit. I'm going to add the white, I'm going to add the white cloud later. For now, I'm just going to do a sky with ma. Yeah, the white clouds, the, those ones are, we haven't done them yet. Yeah. Yeah. We brought, yes. So my sky is actually kind of becoming more of a peachy color today, which I really like. I'm going to put a bit more yellow I'm into it. I'm going to make some orange on my paint palette. Are you? Okay. Too. Sounds good. But like in one of like the circles on my paint palette, because I think my actual paint room palette has run out of room. Okay. I mean, like I did make a lot of purple by accident. Okay. So I just kind of have more of a sweeping kind of color in the middle there. So it's kind of like a yellowy and a white that's bringing itself mm -hmm. up. Okay, cool. And then now I'm going to work on um, the background of where all of these lovely grass fields live. So we have our, so I'm, since I'm doing it on a, a, um, a horizontal, my midpoint is just, or my horizon is just below the middle of my canvas. Um, so I want the sky to still be um, the, the biggest portion of it. I like the, the emptiness of it there. And so the way we're going to do this here is... We need to make a little bit of green, but we have some yellow. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to start off with the yellow. I'm going to put a little bit of white, and then I'm just going to start off with more of a yellow. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have this field kind of 
all of a sudden appear. Here. Now I'm adding yellow. Yeah, so now we're gonna do the fields. And I'm gonna start with the yellow and then I'm gonna build in so that it has more of like the greens. Since we don't have green, we're gonna do, if you have green, you can obviously use green. Um, but since I'm using the mixed color, so I'm gonna get a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna make a green, really like my but I'm going to put more um, yellow into it. So I don't want, if you put too much blue, it's gonna be a bit too dark. Blue is so what I'm doing blue is, is powerful light. It is very powerful. So blue I'm just gonna- Blue is powerful like black. Yeah, blue is powerful like black. So I'm just mixing in that until it's kind of like a light green, a lighter green. It still has a very yellowy tinge to it. And then I'm just bringing that across. I like to add a little bit of white. But I want it to be more yellowy. Like the background, um, I want it to stay more of like a lighter green. I don't want it to um, stand out too much because I want the stems of my flowers to really pop. So I'm using green, I'm using yellow, I'm using white, I'm using more yellow and um, white than I am the like blue, because otherwise it becomes too dark of green. And it's still a little darker, I think, than what I want it to be. My head's not in the way, I think it, so I'm sure. All right. So now I have a nice green base that we're going to put other things on top of. I still want it to be a bit more yellowy, actually. That's good. On the top it's a good here. Green. It's a lot. It's a big watery green. But it'll do. Oh, that's nice, Jack. That's very pretty. Very soft. So that's only for like this kind of like horizon line green. Okay, sounds good. Then nice. I'm going to add like green green. No one can see Jack, so just like a weird voice on the side here, but there's Jack. He's painting alongside my camera. It's just on my laptop, so it's not a... Uh, Very easy. Thing. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, and uh, Nanny says hi, Jack. Oh, hi, Nanny. All right, so... Okay, so I think... I like that. Actually, I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more white. And with the fields, as you've probably been seeing, I didn't actually describe that and I apologize for that, but I'm just going in a uh, back and forth like a horizontal direction to kind of give it just like a nice background, nice open field kind of look. We're gonna end up putting a lot of detail into this mm -hmm. to get to give it the appearance of like this huge like flower field. Mm -hmm. um, but we just want a nice solid background to start off with. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch over from my big fat brush to my medium sized brush. And I'm gonna start building in the mountains. Now the mountains um, are kind of black, but they aren't pure black. They're a little bit um, like a really dark brown, like almost a, a, it's very black. It's like with a tinge of like brown kind of reddish. Um, and that's how we're going to um, make that color. Um, because I don't want it to be pure black. Like I don't, I want it to still have a little bit of texture to it. Oh, that was awesome. So you can see like on some of the mountains, maybe I don't know if you can see it actually, but there's a little bit of texture and it's basically created by having the ability to have like the dark and also the lighter there. So we're gonna make that a little bit lighter. Hi Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Hey Kaylin, how's it going? I still I'm so glad you're joining us from across the pond. You still really should not do that. I'm going to say hi to people who join, Jack. I don't know. Uh, Jack thinks I shouldn't be social on a social media platform, I think. If you do, then strangers will be like, who is this girl talking about? And then you probably get less likes. Oh, okay. I think we're fine, baby. Okay, I'm so what I've done is I'm just mixing um, black in my to my red a little bit just to kind of get a bit of a, a dark, but not like it's very, very dark and it has just like a tinge of the red. How do you like my painting? It's awesome. You can show it here. Jack's been really fast. There you go. I can't turn it too much, baby. There you go. Nice. It's very light. Nice. I like how you blend the colors. 
I didn't really blend them. I really just layered them. It was like red, then like a, good a little bit of orange, then yellow. It looks good. Then I tried to make a light green, but it ended up being kind of gray, and then green. All fun. right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start putting in where the mountains are going to be. Your mountains can live anywhere they want. Um, so you can feel free to have a really huge one in the middle, or you can make them similar oh, to this one where it's a bit high on the side, mm. smaller, and it kind of just builds out back. You can do whichever already, way you want. I already got my mountain. You already know how you want your mountain looks, to be? No, I already have my mountain, and okay. I didn't even realize. See? Yeah. It's like, duh. Yeah, you do, I actually. I didn't even realize. That's really great. All right, cool. So but I'm now, going to still add a little bit of black. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm using, like I said, the that kind of red black, and now we're just gonna pop in where you want your mountains to go. And I'm using my medium brush just because I have a bit more control. So I want it to kind of I want them to live like this. And you don't want it to be super smooth lines, like. Well, I guess you can do whatever you want. It's your mountain range. You can make it however you want it to be. But if you want it to look a little bit more natural, you want it to um, kind of have a bit of a rocky effect. They're not all going to be super even the whole way. Um, the other thing, too, is I'm going to just bring across my horizon. And if you're holding this, like, I would probably normally hold my canvas and try to, like, make that line more straight. But feel free to... Um, do whatever you need. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can do it where you guys can still see what I'm doing. Um, also adding a little bit of water to your paint will make it a lot easier to have a smooth line across your canvas. So I would suggest putting a little bit of water and as you can see already like it's a lot easier for me to drag my brush across. I'm going to do that first. I do want this to be a pretty thick line like that. Yep, too much water. That can happen sometimes. My mountain's crying. Crying mountain. Your mountain is crying. That happens and you have a lot of- My mountain in it, and my mountain isn't. No. So if that happens to you, you just get paper towel and it will come off pretty good. And you can always just touch up the background afterwards. Oh, maybe not again. Okay, well I just messed that up, guys. Oh, great. That's okay. It's okay for me to make mistakes, guys, and I can show you guys how to fix them. I saw too much water on my Maybe paintbrush. Maybe we should do a Lisa's Painting Party bonus edition, mm -hmm. where it's like, to prevent that from happening. Yeah, maybe. If you ever learn how to prevent that from happening. Well, I is. think mistakes are, can be a part of the process, but then you can learn a lot from them too. So I don't really mind if things like that happen, because then we just kind of build off of it and kind of grow from it. So, I've done my deal. mountain. That's the great thing about paint because you can just paint over it, especially using acrylics because they um, are, it's a really great medium. So as soon as you let it dry, you can just paint over it. You might need obviously more paint than with certain colors. Like if it's black, it's actually going to be a bit harder to cover I've done up. The rocky mountains. That's great, babe. And I want this to be a little bit rolling. There we go. Okay. So that's how I'm doing it there. It looks like a bit of shade on the mountain. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that's what I meant to do. It's just the shade. Um, so yeah, so I have the mountains going on here. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to now go back and then add a little bit of texture to the mountains too. Um, I did actually go below my line here too, so I'm gonna I'll fix that up as well. So if that happens to you, don't stress. I'm just gonna keep working on my mountains, let that mistake area dry, and then I'm gonna go back over with like the yellow and the green and the white, and then just touch it up a little bit. You won't have to do a heck of a lot because you're gonna have it look kind of misty and, and everything's gonna flow into the back, so it's fine. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my uh, brush, so I still have it um, with that kind of um, red black color. And I'm just going to decide where, um, you know, the, the, the texture of the mountains are. Um, yep. Just a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to paint, like, the flowers. Is that okay? Sure. I'm not there yet, so I can't really help you with it right now, love. It's fine. Okay. If you want to continue on, go ahead. Okay. 
Alright. I really hope you can't hear Daddy in the background. Yeah, you might be able to hear a little bit. We'll see. Okay, so I got that. So I just made it a little bit. I just put a little bit of white in there to give it kind of like the sun kind of like hits her inside. So it gives it a little bit of um, texture on the mountain. If you end up putting a little bit too much, you can always go back to your darker color and then touch up those areas and just darken it up a little bit. Okay. And then just you can also then also put in some black if you want some darker areas on your mountain too. Okay. So that's how the mountain looks. You can see my mistakes nice and closely as we go on. <laughs> but then we'll fix those up right now. So now I'm going to go back and, and fix the little mistakes there that I made. I'm actually going to still use my medium brush, but I'm just going to rinse it out a lot because I don't want any of that um, dark color to come back and haunt me on those lines. I, I like love that. when you say haunt. When I say haunt? It reminds me of the Pokemon Haunter. Does it? Well, that's cool. Well, let me go All right. Little purple flowers. So I need a little bit more of that greenish color, but I still want to be pretty yellow. So I'm just kind of touching that up, and then I'm just going right. to put it right over. So I'm going to redo my line. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. And then... Get rid of that. I'm gonna get some white. And I'm just gonna blend that in. Okay, that paint is still a little bit wet. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Perfect. Okay. Across as soft as possible. Okay, so there's a big white line right there, yeah, and I'm just gonna soften it with yellow. turned out very perfectly. Oh yeah, it does look really nice. I'm going to do a yellow flower. Okay. So I'm just kind of playing with that again because I was fixing up my mistakes. So I just did that. So then now the line doesn't, it didn't, the mountains didn't bleed into my meadow anymore. So that works out nicely. So I'm going to leave my mountains the way they are. If you want to add a little bit more texture or anything to them, feel free. Um, I like my background so far, how we're doing it. I'm not too worried about the strip too much because we're going to end up putting a lot of things in front of it. So I'm not going to stress about um, touching that up right now. Um, so let's go back to the sky. The sky is now dry. I think it is. Is yours dry? You're working on your it's, flowers, which looks right. It's wet, pretty. but it's dry. Right, so then it's not going to spread out too much, which is good. So I'm still using my medium brush. I'm going to put a little bit more white onto my palette because um, I've used already all of it. I still I still have some white, but it's kind of mixed into the red because when I tried my lavender the first time... I can't time, see you, babe. Because when I tried my lavender the first time, guess what? The lavender was stuck onto the palette. So I had to create another lavender. That makes it harder. And that took up most of my blue. Okay, so now that we're gonna be putting in, we're gonna decide where we want the clouds to be in your sky. Again, in this painting, we have like two kind of together here, one in the far back and one kind of closer to the mountain. You can put your clouds wherever you want them to be. So I'm just gonna get pure white on my um, brush. And um, 
quite a bit of white on there. And we're gonna start and then we're just gonna like build them out. So I'm gonna start by putting one over here. And I'm just like dabbing my brush. Okay, and just kind of creating the fluffiness of the clouds. Okay. okay. And we're going to end up putting in a little bit of um, black, like we're gonna, not really black, we're not putting black in there. We're going to mix a very um, like light gray and then we'll add a little bit of definition to the clouds afterwards if you want to. Or you can make them big old rain clouds if you want. That works too, you just go nuts with the gray. So I like when my cloud is there. Um, let me just show you, you a little bit gray. closer. See? Um, you make gray with white and you uh, black. So I would put a very little bit of black into the white and then do it that way. But I'm just gonna keep just using pure white and make my clouds right now. So, okay. And they can be really any kind of shape you want them to be doesn't have to follow anything. What I like, I usually kind of keep the bottoms uh, very straight. I like the way that looks personally, but you can do it whichever way you want to. I'm gonna put another one over here. It's going to kind of go off the canvas a bit. And I'm just, I'm just, again, I'm just dabbing my brush as I'm going. And it's just pure white paint to give it what I want it to be. And I think I want another cloud kind of that's going to go on top of this other one. So again, I'm just blotting it out and then I'll use some gray to give it more definition afterwards. There we go. So I'm trying to keep that line a little bit straighter. I don't want it to be like a circle fluff cloud. Okay, so there's the clouds that I've popped in. Okay, awesome. I made new paint. <laughs> Today's my day of mistakes. I just touched the bottom of my canvas with white paint. So yeah, this is what's happening today, guys. What's up, love? What do you need? Um. My pink has also dried too, so I made a new pink, and it seems to work out good. Well, that's really good. Awesome. Okay, so now um, I'm going to put in some um, shades. I'm going to get like a little dot of black, and I'm going to mix a lot of white into it. To make gray? To make a very light, light gray. Um, and now I'm just going to put in where I want some of the the darkness so I can kind of see the definition of the cloud. So I definitely want it, this cloud behind here, I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness there and then pull it out a little bit so that it goes into the white. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna add a little bit here. And then I'm gonna go back over with more white. And that will make, that, to me, I, I feel like that helps it a lot. It makes it look really nice. I'm going to start working on my clouds and then I'm going to work on my hot air balloon and then I'm finished. Wow, you are fast. I mean, I've done six flowers and it took me a pretty long time. That's true. You worked on them really well. The detail looks very nice. I think my red and my purple flower were the best. So I just put purple. some pure white now on my brush and I'm just going to go over where I want pure white to go and then now you'll have just the hint of um, the gray in the clouds pop out. So don't want it to be really dark. I want it just to blend just to give it a little bit of texture and contrast. Alright, so that's what I have. Just have a little bit of texture into it. There we go. All right. Oh, I think my message just froze again. Oh, no, we're good. Hey, Kristen. 
Hope you guys are having fun and enjoying it. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, so um, now I want to move down and I want to put in, um, so we're getting the, the flowers going on here. Okay, this is fun. So. So the way I did this one, when I painted it initially, is I actually just right on here, we're gonna start by putting in all the stems. So, and we're gonna start with the ones in the, pretty much in the foreground, we're gonna be building all the foreground, but not the flower. So just the green stems in different shades of green, in yellows as well, cause that will give it more texture and also highlighting it with white. So we're going to be having lots of fun with this. Now, I'm also when having lots of fun with this, that's really great. So I'm going to use my uh, thin brush. Okay. And um, I need more yellow. I need to make more green. Okay. So I need more yellow and da -da -da. okay. So I'm just going to mix um, some green up. And it doesn't really matter what shade you start off with, whether you want to start off with a darker or a lighter green, it doesn't matter. We're going to be building um, lots of these uh, flower bases right now. Okay. This green is very similar to that. Make it a little bit lighter. And the way I'm doing it is adding more um, yellow to my mixture. My brush has quite a bit of paint on it. And then now I'm just going to, you can kind of start wherever you want. And you're going to just, you know what? I need a little bit of water just to make it easier for me to sweep it up. Okay. How do you make brown? So you can use um, black, um, a little bit of black with red. And you can put a little bit of blue and it will kind of give a, a brownie kind of tinge to it. Okay, a little bit of black, kind of a lot of red, and some blue. blue. And with these as well, you don't need to worry so much about mm -hmm. how the ends look on them because you're going to, yeah. we're going to be putting flowers on them. Okay. So just do it whichever way you want, just have fun with it. This is going to take a bit of time. You're going to want to put a lot of different ones. So stick with this color first, put it all over the page. And then we're going I'm to done. change up the, the, the color of the green and then we're going to add more to it. I'm done. I just need to, I just need to write my name. Wow. Great job, babe. I feel like you've gotten faster with every painting we've done. Well, I mean, the more paintings we've done, the harder, the easier it gets. Oh, yeah? Well, that's it to me. That's how you feel about it? That's how I feel. My balloon in the sky kind of looks like a ghost. Your balloon in the sky looks like a ghost? You want to show your painting? All right, come on. This is Jack's painting. So Jack finished his. So he popped his flowers, used some different colors, had the balloon. You all good to go. Awesome. Great job, Jack. Okay. Thanks, Mom. You washed the paintbrushes. You made a big mess there. Can you walk the floor down, please? Look oh. at all look at all the water there. Okay, with that towel? No, not with that towel. Here. Alright. Okay. So just keep going and make your flower stems. Okay. I'm just dipping in a water as I go just to make sure it still stays very easy to spread. Can you guys still see that? Okay, good. And I'm giving them different heights as well. Some of them are a little bit thicker than others and that's fine. And as I mix um, my paint colors, uh, it might end up looking a little bit different too, and that's totally fine because we want everything to kind of have a different feel to it. Okay. 
And sometimes they come right across other ones. I'm a little bigger, actually. When I turned mine horizontally, I didn't think it was actually going to take longer to do the step. Did not think about that. Bigger, some are smaller. So some crisscross over each other too. Okay. Okay. And some even come off the page, so they kind of poked it from the side. Okay, let's just keep putting these in. Okay, some are small. Okay. I'm just mixing some more yellow in my colors. So these are going to be lighter. Okay, and I'm just basically just putting some lines in the page, in the page, <laughs> on the canvas. Okay. How are all your guys is looking? So this is fun. This can actually end up being, uh, again, you can take a lot of time on this. I'm actually going in and making my lines darker now just to kind of give it a bit more kind of bluish and I'm okay with that. You just try to have them go on different angles as well. Move them across this way. I do want them to hit the bottom of my canvas. Is this coming out from the side? Is this one coming out from the side too? Smooth. Okay, so so this is I'm I kind of like the way this looks so far for the front of it. Okay, so now as we go further back into the painting, all of these get smaller and smaller and smaller. So again, we're not going to worry too much about specific detail. We're just going to give the impression of all these little blades of. Um, uh, stems of all these flowers and we're going to use the same colors we kind of just used mm, sorry we're not going to go as dark so we're going to go lighter so if you have the really really dark bright um, green or uh, more of a with more blue into it then we're not using that really too much in the back we're using kind of like maybe like this secondary kind of green instead of the really really strong one and we're going to put like little ticks all the way and the further back you go the less defined and the smaller those little ticks are going to be okay so let me show you so I'm just going to mix this to be a little bit lighter okay. i don't know if it really helps when i show my paint because i feel like it just looks like a big glob that's what i'm doing there my paintbrush has quite a bit of paint on it 
And I'm just going to put little lines and I need more water. I want it to be really easy to spread. So I just added a bit more water to the paint that I made on my um, palette. And I'm just going to put little ticks all the way, making more dots in the background. And it's going to come up, so it's still behind some of the front flowers. Okay. okay. And when, once we put the flowers on, that's when it's really going to pop. That's the fun part. In this original painting, I actually... Um, had started putting in, like I made this kind of an area of like additional flowers. So it's up to you if you want to make that more concentrated and put some reds and pinks and make like kind of like flower sections, that's fine too. I'm not going to do that in this one. I'm going to keep it more uniform. Okay, so I'm just going to keep adding these little ticks. And if you didn't want to make the little patch of flowers in the background there, all you need to do is you kind of just touch it. Like you get like your reds, your pinks, you get some pink, you put a little bit of red, you put a little bit of white, you just like touch your brush and it will give that look there. Okay. 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 So we have the green little dots in the picture. I'm going to get some more yellow. I'll make it a bit lighter. Okay, and I'm going to add yellow little dots, little lines of yellow. This isn't pure yellow. This is kind of like, um, just it still has green mixed into it, but it has more yellow in it. I'm going to realize so I'm just putting a little bit in the foreground as well. Just whatever feels right. Okay. I think I'm getting pretty happy with this color. Okay, so now I'm going to get white and add white to it as well. So pure white, and I'm going to do the same thing. Little lines. And remember, like, as you're going through, if you're putting it in and you're like, oh, I put too much white in or it's a big blob and I don't like the way it looks, don't worry, because you can always go back and you can put some yellow or some green um, and change it up a little bit. So that's what the lovely quality of acrylic paint is. It's like the great thing and the annoying thing about it <laughs> in a way because it does dry so fast so it's great but it's also like if you're taking a long time in one area and you want to go back to something else all of a sudden it's dry so you can't do the same technique or you might have to like go back and like redo some of the stuff you've just done so it can be a little annoying too I'm going to go in and just put a little bit more green kind of over that. Oof, that's like a big dark paint. It's okay. We'll leave it for texture. Just feel the white's a little bright in some spots. So I'm just going over kind of where I've put some of the white marks and just 
I'm just putting a bit more green back on top of it because it's a little much for me. That's just me being particular. It actually, it's fine because when you put everything else on top, it's gonna look fine. Okay. Awesome. Okay, and then let me just show you how that looks. That's what it looks right now. Cool. Okay, great. So now we are going to um, start thinking about how we want to put our flowers. Um, and then once we start mixing that color, then we'll go in and put in um, the little dots of flowers in the background too. Or you can do that now too. It's really up to you. Um, so yeah, so with our flowers, I think I'm going to go back to my medium size. My medium size brush is actually quite, um, it's not super big. So I, I like the size of it for these flowers. So these flowers are, are pretty nice. They are, ooh. so with these flowers, um, you can kind of do them in like one stroke, essentially. Um, if you have different types of paint on your paintbrush in that time. So if you have kind of like red and then it kind of goes into pink and like white at the end, um, then you can kind of like almost do it in like a one stroke and that works out really nice. What happens often is that you'll start to do it and then the paint will start to mix and then you won't really be able to get those like specific kind of different touches. And that's okay because as long as it stays wet, um, we can always add a little bit more to it to kind of um, give it that kind of blended look, but then still have the differences in the colors. So we'll start with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my red and white and get my brush into this palette right now. So I'm just bringing in the paints to the center. And even as I'm doing that, you'll probably see if you start pulling red and pulling white, you're already gonna start seeing this kind of marbleized effect on your palette. So right now, right now my brush is already like a marbleized effect going on. There's quite a bit of paint on my brush. And with these flowers, the way I'm gonna build them, so just pick wherever stem that you wanna go with. Um, and then, they're, the way I did them was like kind of like a five stroke. So we have the middle stroke, and then we have one on the side, another one on the side, and then one there, and one there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. This flower is very just plain old pink, and I'm gonna add more to it to give it um, a bit more of that um, red and yellow and those streaks into it. So again, I'm just gonna pull more white into my mixture and I'm gonna put another flower right here. Okay. And even to the top of that, I just got pure white and I'm just adding a little bit of pure white into that pink. And as I'm adding that pure white, it's already mixing with the wet paint that's on the canvas and it's blending it in and kind of giving it more of a streaky look. And then I can do the same thing with the red and add a little bit of darkness to it too. Okay, so I'm gonna leave those for now. I'm gonna go back and touch them up in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep putting in my flowers. And some of them, you might stick with the five petals. Kind of the five, or you might just do three. Maybe it hasn't fully bloomed yet. Whatever you want. Okay, so I'm just going back in and putting in some more white and a little bit of red as I go. And 
And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of trying to keep um, brushing it the same way, like with each of the petal I've just done. There's another one right here. Okay. And then there's another one on the side here that's off the canvas. But it's still living over there, just poking its head out. There's another one here, and it's a bit smaller. This one only has two. white and when it dries a little bit too you can add a bit more like white and red into it if you want to be more precise about how you're adding it okay so just play with that make some bigger make some smaller um Maybe some are a little bit brighter red than others. That that's fine too. This one's gonna be a little brighter. If you want to make your flowers different colors, you go ahead. If you want to make them yellow and purple and green, so Jack went and he put some purple and some blue um, and a red flower. So like, feel free to do that too. And then some of them are just going to be like little blotches like that. Like they haven't even budded yet. Okay. So make them in all different stages of growth is fine. Some of them feel more concentrated than others. That's good too. Another big one over here. Might overlap a bit, but that's fine. Okay. All right. That way. So I'm trying to have the brush actually do a lot of the work for me in terms of like how the petals are going to land. And the color. I think I'm going to go in and out a little bit more once it dries in terms of the texture of these. And da -da -da. Okay, that one's pretty lame. All right, let's get that one a little bit nicer. All right, that's a little better. I'm okay with that one now. Awesome. So I'm just going back and forth, like I said, just putting a bit of red and a little bit of pink and it's mixing on its own as it's going. So let me just show you guys a little bit closer how it looks. Can you guys see that okay? So there's some big, some small, some are budded, some aren't. And that's what I have so far. Okay, cool. So you can, I'm just going to add a little bit. So I'm just going to take a look at it. And if I want to add a little bit more red or a little bit more white, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, 
actually, I don't want to touch that one. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So now, um, what else do I want to put anymore? I think I kind of do still actually. I want to put one more there. And I want to put another one here. I'm kind of lining them up where I have stems. So feel free to do the same. And just keep putting them in until you're sick of putting in flowers <laughs> or until you feel like it's it's where you want it to be. I want this one to be bigger, actually. There you go. That's nicer. I like that one. That's good. I feel like that one needs one too, but. Mm. I don't want to touch this other flower I have here. Okay. Okay, so once you're good with that, I'm just going to switch over to my fine point brush again. And I want to put in all those little dots of flowers to give it the impression that, that this field is like full of flowers. With my thinner brush too, I might go back in and put some more red. Um, thanks, Linda. Um, some more red and some more white to just um, give the flowers a bit more oomph to it. So now with my thin brush, I'm just getting water and making it kind of pink again, just so it pops nicely when I put those little dots of flowers. Okay, and we're just gonna go, we'll just put little dots. some in the background, putting some in the foreground, some between. Um, a little bit closer, but they're still kind of further back. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing, but with a little bit of red, just to give it a bit of a contrast. Okay, so I'm just little dots Let's just put little dots on the back as many or as little as you want and if you put too many and you're like oh my gosh it's too red or it's too pink you can always lighten it with a bit of white or yellow you can always dull them out a little bit Some mine are coming to the foreground a little bit too, just in the back. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. These are a little more prominent than the ones I did there. I think I lightened them up a little bit in the original. So there we go. So you can kind of see the little dots in the background to give the idea of the flowers that are there. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. So what I'm also gonna do um, before I move on from my flowers, um, like I said, right now, for my preference, the flowers, I feel like mine are a little bit still too pink. They don't have enough contrast with the red. So I still want to go in and add a bit more red to them. Um, they're still pretty wet, so I'm not going to do that right yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add some of the details. So in the original painting here, you'll see that um, there's like a little bit of highlight on some of the darker of uh, the, um, uh, the stems. So I'm going to put that in. And I'm also going to add in some of the flowers too. Um, you'll see there's such some white dots in the background that kind of like give an idea of like more life and it just kind of, I like the way that looks and it looks a little bit nicer. Um, there's also some dots in the flowers as well. But I think, like I said, I'm gonna still wanna make the flowers a little bit darker. So I'm not gonna do those dots yet until they dry a bit. And once we're done that, we'll put in our balloon. So let's go in with the white and then I'm just gonna, Put a bit of water. I'm just gonna highlight. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight some of these stems.
And I'm doing some of the darker ones and some of the lighter green ones. Okay. And just do this until you're, you feel good about it. I'm going to go in and actually, I want to put in a few more stems. Actually, I feel like I need a little bit more painting. So I'm just going in and just putting a few more stems that are a little bit darker. One of them down here. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I like that more. I think it pops a little bit more like that. Pop, pop. Okay, cool. So I just added a bit more, some darker at the bottom, and I put the highlights on the ones I wanted to put the highlights on. Okay, cool. So I think I'm going to. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to go and move and do the balloon, and then I might come back down and do some touch-ups if I decide to do some more touch-ups on that. Okay, so now you want to decide where you want your balloon in your sky to be. You can put it anywhere you want. So if you want to put it at the top, you want to put it kind of where that one is, so kind of in the middle. I, I do kind of like it there, so I might put this one there too. You could put it more up. Maybe I might actually put it there. Hmm. Yeah, I might do that actually. I don't know yet. Okay, let's see. I should know by this point. This is where we're going to be putting it in. Okay, so pick the color that you want your balloon. Um, I did this one in um, blue and purple, like, stripes. You can kind of see that. Um, but for right now, just pick the one of the colors that you want to use. So I'm going to do blue, and I'm going to just draw out where I want my balloon to be. So with my thin brush... I'm getting my blue paint. I am putting quite a bit of water into this blue paint to try to make it really, um, again, easy to work with, but not dripping down your board like I showed you guys earlier. You don't want to do that. Awesome. Okay, so I've got paint on my brush. Nice. And then let's just decide where we want it to be. You know what? I am going to put it back here. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then just paint it in. See if I need a little bit more water. Oh, that might be a mistake. I don't feel good so far. And it can be as big or as small as you want it to be. Okay, so right now it's just like that. It does come down a little bit more. I made mine a little bit too circular. I'm going to just bring it down. More like a balloon and less like a blue orb floating in the sky. Sounds like it's raining. No, it's not like it is. Okay. Needs to be a little bit rounder on top. Okay. Well, that's what we got. We got the balloon right there. Okay. So that has, yeah, so I'm not going to, right now it's pretty wet, so we're going to leave that for a moment. 
Okay, I'm going to do the bottom of the balloon also in this really thin brush. So again, I want to use, um, I don't want it to be fully black. So I'm using my black with my red and I just have that kind of like brownish color. Okay, I'm just getting some more water in there so it's easier for me to use it. Okay, so, so right underneath the, right in the tip of where the balloon is, there's like a little, it's kind of like a, the base of the balloon. So it's just like that. I don't know if it's very small. It's hard to see. Okay, and then we have our basket, which is just a little bit further down. And the basket kind of comes in a little bit on the sides. Okay. And then there's like strings that attach the top to the bottom. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. So, if the balloon itself is just annoying and you're kind of like, I don't even wanna make it in color, you don't have to. You can just paint it all in black and just make it like a silhouette in the background, that works too. I do wanna have a little bit of texture to it, so I am gonna add in um, some of the, the streaks down. So in my blue, I'm gonna get my red paint Um, a little bit of blue, just to kind of already give it the purpley color that I want, but more red than anything else. I'm just going to bring some stripes down. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit, the balloon itself, and I just want to add a little bit of detail um, into the actual basket. It's already a bit dry there. So I'm going to put a little bit of white, a touch of black, just to get a bit of a gray going. I don't want it to be like garishly white, but like a very, very, very light gray. And then I'm just going to add like a little bit of like highlight and texture to there and to the basket as well. I just don't want it to be darker than that. There you go. And this kind of gives it a little bit of texture. And I want to put my little decoration on the basket, but I'm not going to do it yet because it's still very wet. So now as that is still drying, if yours is dry enough, so mine, out, my, the outside edges are dry enough. So just take a look at your balloon. If it's dry enough, proceed. If not, just wait a little bit until it dries. Um, and then I'm going to get white and I'm going to just give it a bit of a... Highlight. So I'm just going to see it's not liquidy enough for me to use that right yet. I put a little bit of water into my white and now it's smoother on my brush. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of like go around the balloon a little bit with the white. And that's going to kind of give it a bit of a kind of give it a bit of the shape of the balloon.
This one looks a little bit hairy now. It's kind of funny. Okay. I'm actually going to, yeah, I am still going to use some of the wet paint, the blue and the red, and then just mix it in a little bit. So I want it to look um, three-dimensional-ish <laughs> as best as I can. Okay, there we go. So I'll kind of show you what I did. It's a little bit, a little bit wet. It's still pretty blurry. I still don't want to touch it up a little bit. This painting actually has quite a bit of detail in it, as you guys can see. So um, we're already, are we already at? Yeah, already past the one hour mark. So this is something that um, you may, well, you can easily spend like a couple of hours adding more detail to your flowers, going in more detail and, and getting more specific to your balloon. Um, this isn't really like a, a very quick painting. So this is something that you wanna maybe go back I'm um, gonna take a little bit longer when we um, wrap up the live. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just add in the little decoration to the basket with the pure white paint. And that's kind of like a zigzaggy pattern, a brush. Zigzaggy pattern like that. I like that. It's cute. And then I'm going to go in with my flowers and I'm just going to add a few of those touches that I was telling you about. Um, again, I'd probably still, I still would want to make mine a little bit darker. Um, but like if you just get white on your paintbrush and you just put like a little bit, a few like dots around some of the flowers, it just makes it pop. I'm just going to put a few dots. If you have some like outlying um, stems that don't have anything on the top, you can do the same. You can kind of target those. And I usually put like two or three and you can also just put a few of them kind of in a random spot. Okay. And then you do the same thing for the middle of your flower. So you can put a couple dots and that just brings a bit of life to it. Okay. So I'm just going in and putting a few little dots on each of the flowers. And then seeing if I want to add any more little elements anywhere else. So just feel free if you want to do that. All right. And I feel like that just adds, it just, I don't know, to me, it just looks like it um, ties in the painting a bit more. Um, I do want to add a little bit more red on some of my flowers. So I am just going to take a few minutes and do that. Can you zoom into the balloon again? Yeah, sure. One second. Sorry. My paintbrush is a little bit wet. Okay. There we go. I got it. Okay. So this is the one that I did. I'm still going to do more touch-ups on this one because it's not quite the way I like it right now. Let me show you the original ones you can see. So that just, you see the streaks are a bit more defined. And then you have the white kind of just showing the top to kind of circle it and then black at the bottom to kind of um, give it the appearance of more of a circular appearance. So I'll be touching up the balloon a little bit more too to give it that same look since it's not quite what I like. When I did the first balloon, I think I did it a little bit differently and I like 
that style a little bit more. It's the tricky part about doing these. You paint something like a few days in advance and then you're just like, forget your tips and tricks of it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of darker red on some of the flowers. about a little white if it's a little bit off. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to add a little bit more to the flowers. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to go back to that balloon a little bit more because I'm not happy with it, like, as I showed you. So let me just um, make a little bit more purple. Okay. Okay. So we're just a little bit more purple. And okay. Okay. Just to find that a little bit more. Oh, I made a different color purple. Uh -huh, that happens. Okay. Okay. I want to just get these lines a bit more defined. And then I want purple blue. There you go. I'm kind of redoing it right now because I didn't like the way the lines looked on it. I'll make it a little bit more defined. Okay. Okay, and now white. Okay. Of course, I didn't put water in it, so it's like so hard to use when you don't have it smooth enough. Okay. Okay, so I'm just mm. All right, so I just put some white and I pulled it down a little bit from the top. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing with a little bit of black on the bottom. Oof, that's not smooth enough. I'm not letting it dry fully and that's part of my problem. So I'm just trying to get it done so I can show you guys. So, it's not dry very quickly, but that's a little bit better. So you can see the more defined lines of the balloon. And then you have the white to kind of give it the emphasis of the curve on top and then the black to give it um, the bottom as well. So that's how this one looks here. 
Okay, I'll show you this one again. This is, I do like, this one I like more. <laughs> um, it's weird when you're on camera, you, I definitely get more nervous than I think I'm gonna get. Um, but on the original one, I did let it dry a bit more between. So it did have more um, time to sit. And also I do like how my basket's a little smaller here too and how the lines on the white kind of um, curve a little bit nicer and, and you can see them. With this white line here, like um, you just like have to touch it a little bit to give the curve on top and there's still a bit of an outline of the balloon so you can kind of see the definition of it. So there we go. Awesome, okay, cool. So I think that's pretty much it for this secondary one there. So here we go, here's the final product. Ooh, I can't put it straight. It's weird. There you go. So I think I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. The balloon I'm still being a little bit of a perfectionist about, and I'm not as happy with the second balloon as my first balloon in the first picture, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to let it dry, and then I might end up touching it up a little bit just to see if I like um, want to do something else with it. I'm pretty happy with the flowers, though. Um, I do like how in my first picture I actually did put a lot more darker green um, lines in the front. Um, so again, I might go in and add a bit more darker, um, green, um, to give the stems just a bit more of a pop. This one's definitely a lot more like softer, um, in terms of like the, the color palette. And this one has a bit more brightness to it with the bottom. And that's definitely because of the darker green. Um, and then the red is a bit more prominent on these front flowers. So if you want to accomplish that, if you're depending on the colors that you're using, um, you'd want, like, you may want to make this a bit darker so just maybe go over it with like more darker uh brighter green that will come up more and then you can always add a little bit more red and stuff and it'll pop a bit more um i do kind of like that it's softer and that's the great thing about painting is that it can always turn out a little bit different every time it doesn't have to be the same every time so i hope you guys have enjoyed this um again i'll show you my son jack's painting so here's jack's painting it's got the balloon it's got the clouds got some flowers got all the elements there so perfect Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Please, 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 when you're done doing your pictures, please um, share them, take a picture of it and um, send it in the comments. I would love to see them. That's the most fun part about this. Um, if you have any questions or if there's anything um, else that you guys uh, need, let me know. Um, like I said, this is uh, Lisa's Painting Party. Thanks so much for joining me today and have a fantastic rest of your weekend and happy Easter as well for everyone celebrating. Bye, guys.